Hello mate, how's it going? Welcome back to Full Therapy with me, your host Yan. How you doing mate? Good, I hope. I hope you're well. Really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News, of course. The Daily. That's right, ladies and gents. Every single ruddy day daily series here on Football Therapy where I reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my opinion on it, but of course, more importantly, asking for yours, dear friend. Lots to get into today as per the normal custom here on Chelsea News and Football Therapy. Armando Brogia scores again for Southampton. Fabrizio Romano gives us an update on Chelsea's plans regarding him. Developments in the transfer window regarding Emerson Palmieri. Oh my word, what's going to happen there? And the Chelsea manager, Thomas Tuchel, has commented on how he looks to develop Romelu Lukaku. And we can talk about, is he going to work? Speaking about strikers, people are like, get Brozier in. He's elite, man. Forget Werner, Havertz and Lukaku. Is that realistic? We're going to talk about all of it today, man. Settle in, get comfortable. Let's see if we can get a bunch of likes, friends. 3,000 likes, you and I together. I think we can do it. Click like, thank you friend, and of course you're all welcome to subscribe, it's just a click of a button, it takes one click, bang, subscribed, and then while you're there, an inch over, if an inch, like a millimetre over to click the bell. Alright then, let's get into it. So let's start off with Armando Broger, of course he scored a lovely goal going through for Southampton yesterday against Brentford in the Premier League. Lots of comparisons being made to uh, Diego Costa about being ruthless, taking that chance, running on the ball. I've made a couple of videos on Armando Broja. I looked at one that I made in uh, February 2020, so the beginning of 2020 when he was banging for the development team, you know, before he went on his loan to Vitesse. He looked very, very good. He looked exciting then. He looks exciting now. Of course, he's been to Vitesse, had a pretty good loan spell, followed the same path as Mason Mount. Now, he's in the Premier League. I think he's scored five goals and eight appearances. I'm not even sure they're all starts, to be honest. Um, an incredible return, and uh, the Southampton fans adore him. They really, really want him to stay. Uh, Ralph Hassenhutl has been saying some stuff like... He said something like all... Um, uh, I don't know if he said Chelsea and Man City rejects, but the players that don't make it are all welcome here, he said. Uh, and he's, you know, people at Southampton are saying, he loves it here, he's welcome here. But, um... It, uh, Brogia, he wants to make it at Chelsea. I'm going to read you a, uh, a quote here. I'm going to get this off um, Cy Phillips' uh, Twitter page. I think if I can find it here. Um, when asked whether he has spoken to the club uh, about keeping Brogia beyond the summer, Hassenhutl replied, so this is from the manager, yes, sure, he likes it here. He loves it here. It would be great if he um, if he was our player. He wants to be with us, I think. You can feel this. Mmm. He wants to be with us, I think. And then another tweet, again from Cy Phillips. Uh, Chelsea have no intentions of selling Broja. Ding, ding, ding. He's been a massive Chelsea fan since he's a kid. And of course, this is a quote from Armando himself. I was so happy at Chelsea because I could play for the club I supported. I was like, yes, I want to be here. This is the club I love. And Fabrizio Romano has already tweeted, um, yes, Ralph Hasenhutl wants, um, you know, Armando Broja, but Chelsea are already making plans for the young striker. Now, before we move on and quickly talk about transfers and Lukaku and that, um, what should be the plan of Armando Broja? Yes, it's very easy to get overexcited. Um, because he did really well in the development squad. He went to Vitesse and took on that challenge, and now he looks very good in the Premier League playing for Southampton side. Does that mean he should just be dropped in as Chelsea's first striker? <laughs> Over £100 million Romelu Lukaku, £72 million Kai Havertz, Chelsea's two most expensive record signings, and even Timo Werner, who's, um, you know mid-twenties and scored so many goals in his career and cost £50 million. Uh, does, he, does this academy product who's had a sort of, so far, a semi-good, well, a good loan spell in the first half of the season he scored five goals. If you reach double digits for Southampton, that's promising. Is it getting a little bit overexcited to be like, bring him in, he's the one? <laughs> maybe. Though maybe if he does look very good and he looks like he's ready for the level. I don't mind whatever happens, to be honest. If he goes to a high-profile loan, like a Dortmund 
or a Leipzig or, you know, a Atalanta in City Air, like a really high profile Champions League club on a loan where he can score goals. That would be great, I think, and that would be the final finishing school before he comes back to Chelsea to be first challenging for first striker. Because if you bring him back next season, uh, you know, unless you sell one of those aforementioned three. I mean, even like, because Kai Havertz clearly is a striker under Thomas Ducal. Romelu Lukaku is, you know, the most expensive centre forward in English football history. Um, he's not going to just have a loan at Southampton score like eight or nine goals and overtake Romelu Lukaku. And you could argue Armando Brogia is going to need to play first team football. I mean, you don't really, that's not even an argument, is it? He's 20, are we 21? You know, he's still quite young, but he's absolutely good enough to be leading the line somewhere. That's a non-negotiable, surely, between all the fans. So, um, yeah, man, I kind of think, you know, maybe another loan. If Tuchel wants him back and says, yes, please, um, he'll get loads of game time. If he bangs him in, he'll start, you know. Fair enough. I'm I'm here for it, man. But at the same time, I think we all have to be a little bit sensible and reflect uh, on it, honestly. So let me know what you guys think down below regarding um, uh, Amanda Broja. We are going to talk about... Tuchel's recent comments on Romelu Lukaku, which is very interesting. But quickly, citing Simon Johnson in The Athletic, talking about Emerson Palmieri, of course. Looks like Luca Digne is probably going to be off to Aston Villa to join Philippe Coutinho. Mad. Um, and uh, obviously Trippier went to Newcastle. Chelsea are apparently not interested in going into the market, and they want to bring back Emerson because he knows the system, he knows the club, and it, it's a temporary solution while we try and navigate, you know, this season rather than bringing in someone new mid-season and being like, this is Chelsea. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I'm quoting um, some of this article here from The Athletic. Coach Thomas Tuchel has made recalling Emerson from a season-long loan at Lyon in the French top flight his first choice. Quote, We appreciate Emerson as a player and as a person in general, Tuchel said last week. He has such a huge influence, but is, uh, it is not just what I wish for. We need to evaluate the situation that we're looking into. But the process isn't straightforward. When Emerson left for the south of France in August, the deal included a clause to sign the 27-year-old Italy international permanently for 15 million euro, about 12.5 million pounds. Leon committed to taking him for a whole season, so Chelsea are in an unusual situation of having to pay some form of compensation to bring back a player they already own. While it seems farcical for Chelsea to spend more money on a player they A, already own, and B, have been trying to sell for a few windows, it's still going to work out cheaper to cough up whatever it takes to get Emerson back than to go buy someone else. And of course, remember, buying someone else is that in this particular winter market, is that going to be a long-term option? Chilwell comes back, they might want to bring in an Ian Matson after another year and bring him as a rotation. Or, you know, there's lots of stuff to consider rather than putting yet another big uh, name on the wage bill this window for like 100k or whatever Dino wanted to add to our already massive massive wage bill and Chelsea of course aren't financially as sound as we've perhaps thought we were the latter option is not ideal anyway because Chilwell will get his place back once he returns and they will be stuck with a uh, surfeit of left backs loads of left backs essentially uh, Chelsea have had two approaches to Leon rejected and the last thought to be worth 3.3 million pounds. Like best part of three and a half million pounds just to get your own player back that you've loaned them. But the feeling at the European Champions' end is that a compromise can be reached, which is interesting because I thought um, uh, Emerson might have actually said to Leon, I I'm happy to stay here. Like, you know, we're playing well and, you know, we just drew a PSG. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm recognised as a really good starter here. Emerson might have just been like, you know, I don't really want to go, mate, you know. Uh, and, but pff, whatever, I'll read on quickly. Leon are already being linked with Liga and Sainz rivals. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain, left-back, Levon Kozawa, of course, another full-back. 13-cap France international, who's made just one club appearance this season. Uh, there you go. So it's an, op op uh, an opportunity there to get an Emerson Palmieri, you know, uh, option there. If in it, I guess they could buy him, but then what, do we have Emerson back on our books long-term? Lots to consider. The uh, The article goes on. I, uh, I urge you guys to go read it. It gives you sort of more detail about what the people at Leon are saying. They're concerned that, you know, they'll end up with someone that is performing worse than Emerson, despite maybe having a few million compensation. <clears throat> 
I'm keeping my eye very close to this. Of course, it does make sense for a multitude of reasons to bring back Emerson Palmieri as Tuchel's first choice. He really likes him. I've said this in previous videos. I'll, re I'll, I'll repeat myself now. He said um, always last season that he felt so bad he wasn't playing him because he was training so well and his attitude was so good. Tuchel said that. He felt obligated to um, pay, I suppose, Ben Chilwell because he's the record signing and the best left back of the club or left wing back. And Alonso because he's a specialist left wing back. And that's what he does. And we play a 3 5 uh, free, <clears throat> free, four, three. So it was nothing to do with Emerson being a bad player. It was just like, oh, he's just about missing out here. But he loved him. And, um, you know, he scored, scored in like the Champions League against Atletico Madrid. Played left centre back, left wing, left wing back, right wing. He played all over the place. Really trusted by Tuchel. Uh, he's Tuchel's, um, you know, preferences. That's what. That's who he wants. That's who he wants to bring back. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if Leon dig their heels in and say no, what are we gonna do? Like, are we just gonna really like sit someone down? Are we gonna sit down like a Harvey Vale and be like, mate, wing back now? Actually, uh, not um, Harvey Vale, uh, Lewis Hall, excuse me, and be like, you know, yeah, great job at centre back. You're gonna have to do wing back for a bit, mate. <laughs> do you know what I mean? We're gonna all like pull a cig or Hudson the door. I don't know, man. Even might even see Cesar Spilicueta jumping over to um, left wing back. I mean, I guess I don't know. It's tricky. So there's a van reversing outside. I don't know if you can hear that. It's very, very tricky. We'll see what happens. Of course, make sure you keep it locked here to football therapy, and I'll give you updates on that. Excuse me. I want to talk about Romelu Lukaku. The Guardian published an article. This morning, who's it by then? Jacob Steinberg, of course, covering Chelsea for The Guardian. Um, this is from yesterday, actually, on the Tuesday. Uh, Tuchel speaking about Romelu Lukaku. Let's read a quote from the uh, Chelsea gaffer now. Romelu had a huge physical impact in the game against Tottenham, Tuchel said. Maybe he wasn't so spectacularly involved, but he was involved in playing a crucial part with his physical abilities. Uh, we saw that in his data. Ooh, the physical abilities alarm going off. Romelu Lukaku does not want to be seen as a physical player. He wants to be an active footballer that uses that is just physical as well. Doesn't matter, you are physical. This is what sometimes you've got to utilise. Let's read on. Once he adapts to the physical style of the league, he's got over 100 Premier League goals, but we move. Um, there is no doubt he will have a huge impact. We will, not, this is important, we will not reinvent his style or reinvent the player. That's big. He can simply be Romelu and, uh, and then we are all fine and then he will score because that's what he always does. Interesting. He goes on to say... Um, uh, nothing helps more uh, than goals with strikers. There is no need to talk, no video that the build up that can be the same feeling as a goal. Essentially, he's saying um, we're not going to try and make him this like central striker. We're going to let him do his thing. We're going to let him run that right channel like, into run towards goal. But inevitably, there is going to be that sort of element of you are strong, stronger than all our other alternatives up front, and that's useful. Do you know what I mean? I don't think that's detrimental to sort of imply that. Let's just read a little bit more. Chelsea's manager was asked whether Timo Werner could act as a forward for Lukaku who flourished alongside Lautaro Martinez at Inter last season. Quote, he could, but I see no reason that we should copy Inter, Tuchel replied. Interesting that. We have our style and enough possibilities. We can play with two strikers. We can play 3-5-2. We have the possibility to play three strikers. This is good. We played 4-4-2 against Tottenham, which, you know, a lot of us are thinking it's 4-2-2-2 because that's the vibe at the moment. Uh, and the first leg. I don't mean it in a harsh way. The players need to show they are good enough to start. We are not inventing new stuff to make the players better or more happy. They have all it takes. It's on them to show it. So essentially, he's saying, look... I'm not going to like play a 3-5-2 for Romelu Lukaku or play a 4-2-3-1 for Hakim Ziyech. And yes, there's certain shapes and styles and tactical approaches that complement other players, but he's not going to necessarily change and bend his will to suit those individuals, which kind of makes sense because Chelsea is a developed squad that has such super talent, but erratic talent of like amazing creative right winger, you know, Fabregas style right winger with 
you know, Ziyech or, you know, Lukaku is really good at playing in a strike partnership or, you know, um, Kai Havertz, who's a majestic sort of a number eight, number 10 hybrid, but has to play as a, a nine because we, we don't have a number 10 or a number eight. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Timo Werner wants to play as a sort of like asymmetrical left striker off someone like Paulson. So, you know, you could say it's a little bit like Lukaku, but they're still slightly different. There's loads of player examples like that, you know, um, and loads of players that just want to play left wing, like Hudson Adore and Pulisic and stuff like that. Um, so I get it. You have to just we they found the structure that works for Chelsea. That when where people are playing okay and you don't have an injuries, you don't concede goals and you don't concede chances against. That's the three four three with the double six, uh, and that is built for winning games, especially like you know individual games like Champions League finals and stuff. So players have to bend their will to that at the moment. I am, you know, I like the idea of switching to a back four at times. I've got absolutely nothing against it, but I'm just playing devil's advocate and, and going with what uh, Thomas Tuchel says there. So we've covered a lot today. The Armando Broja situation, the development and uh, app- uh, adaptation of Romelu Lukaku, and uh, the situation with Emerson and uh, looking into the market. Who knows, if we can't get Emerson, maybe there'll be a panic buy and we'll get some sort of crap left back from Italy that we're lumbered with for five years. We'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me today. Please do drop a like. Let's see if we can reach 3,000. Um, if it's yet to reach 3,000, please do. Let's see if you can make that difference. And you're all welcome to sub. Of course, friends, enjoy the football. I will see you later.